Thank you, Travis. The race to replace Mike Johans in Nebraska's U.S. Senate seat is heating up. The calendar has not yet turned to 2014, but we already have a crowded field of GOP candidates vying for voters' attention. Shane Osborne is one of those candidates, and he joins us live this morning. Thank you so much for joining oh, us. Thanks we appreciate for it. Me, we Chris. rushed you in here, so we'll yeah, let you no, catch your works. breath. It is a crowded field, as we talk about. It ben is. Sass, Sid Dinsdale, Bart McClay. How, how are you different from those other candidates? Well, I think there's some really good candidates in this race, but I think when you look back, uh, there's a few different factors. Uh, I think experience matters and leadership matters. And so uh, what we need in Washington, D.C. are people that are going to put the country first above their own political well-being. And, and I, I ask people to look at my history. As a, as a Navy veteran for nine years serving my country, I, I've had the best leadership training in the world, and I've certainly put the country first. Yeah. Uh, as a state treasurer, I kept my promises. You know, I cut a budget over 12 12 percent while I was state treasurer, reduced the staff by over a quarter, uh, brought transparency. That's something we need in Washington, D.C. So I, I actually know how to shrink government. That's a pretty rare feat. And, then, oh, and, an, and one more thing, yeah, I'm an entrepreneur. Yeah. So okay. I started a business that helps the disabled vets returning from the war uh, get jobs and careers. So I know what it's like to sign the front of a paycheck, not just the back of one. And so. So at the end of the day, those are some of the differences that I think I bring to the table. Let's talk about some of the issues. Health care, sure. giant issue. Everybody's talking it about it. Uh, it, it. Nebraska is a state with a lot of self-employed people, and we've been seeing statistics where more and more of those people are uninsured. You've talked about repealing the Affordable Care Act. Is, is it yes. so wrong, though? It, it is wrong. It doesn't do what it says it's going to do. It's actually decreasing the access to health care. I have been consistently speaking out on this like, since 2009 when I was state treasurer at rallies across the state. What this is is it's a failed system that's going to result in government-run health care. And if you want to see how government-run health care works, look at the VA. That's the largest health care system in the United States. It's completely government-run. And there was just a CNN uh, article last week talking about all the veterans that are dying every single day simply because they can't get access to health care. And if we're going to treat veterans that way, how are they going to treat the average citizen? And so we need to not only repeal this, but replace it with individual health care plans that people own. You can take it from employer to employer across state lines. That's the free market solution to this that will help drive the costs of health care down long term. But do you think that it takes government? We, we've had the free market sort of solution, and it's created the we, problem. We really can haven't. There, help, is, there isn't currently uh, portability uh, in our health insurance uh, like we have. It's tied to your employer most of the time, or you can't take it across state lines. So that is something that, that I think would be a change that would make significant uh, improvements. Let's talk federal budget now. Sure. Of course, you talked about how you would cut, in when, as state treasurer, you cut uh, yeah. expenses. We, we hear about it all the time in Washington, everybody wanting to cut and everybody wanting to do it. Can you really cut, though? Every time cuts do happen, it seems like we've got special interest groups that you, make you it You do, not and happen. it's not easy, but that's why I say I've done it. You know, mm -hmm. every, every, every Republican is going to tell you they're a fiscal conservative, but how many of them have actually shrunk government? We have, a, we have a balanced budget amendment here in Nebraska. We don't spend money we don't have. That's something we need in Washington, D.C. If we, if we, if we forced that and, and got that passed, you would force the Congress to make the tough choices to live within our means, just like Nebraskans do every day, sitting at the kitchen table. We've all, we've all cut our budgets to make, you know, in these last several years with tight times. Why can't we make the federal government do that? That's something I'll do when I, when I get there. We've been seeing in this campaign already a little bit of a push to the right, so to speak. You've definitely sure. gotten some endorsements from conservative groups. Your sure. opponent, Ben Sass also getting that. Are, are we pushing way too far to the right? Have we lost the moderate uh, sort of voice? You know, and, 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 and I think that I've, I've got support across the spectrum. And, and that's just because I think people know I'm going to tell you what I'm going to do, and I'm going to do it and get it accomplished. I, I like to get things done. I think talk is cheap. And so uh, when I look at this, my, my endorsements, I'm looking for in-state endorsements. You know, we've had several come out, several of the state senators, but, but I plan to represent all Nebraskans. You know, I think we're all pretty fiscally well-minded here in this state, and that's, that's the focus. That's the threat to our country is the $17 trillion in debt and, right. and the $50 trillion plus in unfunded liabilities. We need to get that. We need to, and that's going to take some, some political sacrifice. You're going to have to get out there and build relationships and understand that not everybody in the Senate is going to be as conservative as I am. I get that. But at the same time, it's worked well here in Nebraska. We just need more of it in D.C. Are you concerned that the, as both of you and, and maybe some of the other ones in the race now push towards the right, sure. it's going to be a situation, especially you've been the front runner a little bit, some polls have shown. Sure. Are you concerned about what had happened with John Bruning and Don Stenberg and all of a sudden, oh. you know, uh, somebody comes up from the other side you, on There's that. no doubt that outside groups are going to come in and attack me. But at the end of the day, how you beat that is the ground game. We just finished hitting all 93 counties. I put on over 30,000 miles. We were just in McCook last night. The mayor had a 
an event for us out there. And, and that's how you do this. My focus has been on the third district. I announced in Grand Island. I grew up in small town Nebraska outside of Norfolk, you know, and, and so that's my focus and that's how you win this. You know, Nebraskans, if they're going to vote for you, they want to meet you. They want to shake your hand and get to know you a little bit. These outside groups, they're going to play and, and yes, they come in and do some nasty things sometimes, but that can't be my focus. I won't, I won't, I don't have the most money of anybody in this race. I, I won't raise the most money, but I will work the hardest. Shane Osborne, it's going to be a very interesting 2014 already. Thank you for joining Thank us. Thank you for having me. I appreciate, appreciate it. it. Stay with us. All right, when we come back again, as Travis said, the cold 